Hello, beautiful people, and hello, September. I'm April Lauren, your host here on the Wake Up Bright podcast, where I share all the things that help me live each day a little brighter and healthier. In today's episode, I want to talk to you a little bit about the upcomings in September, how my reset month went, and explore the inner beliefs that make you unstoppable, as written by Darren Donnelly in his book, Think Like a Warrior, The Five Inner Beliefs That Make You Unstoppable. This is like a very sports reference book. However, we are not focusing on the sports, more so the concepts that he shares. The first being, I focus only on the things I have total control over, my effort and my attitude. The second being, I love what I do and I attack each day with joy and enthusiasm. When I very first bought this book, I was like, I know I'm not very interested in this book because it's all like fiction sports stuff (laughs) and I'm like "Eh, no not for me but as I started reading it so back then I started reading it and I was like yeah I'm not reading this and I put it down and I think that that happened for a reason because as I picked up the book this time I just felt walloped right upside of my head (laughs) um my very very hard head And it has been everything that I have needed to read and feeling a little teary (laughs) as I say that. It just, the concepts in the book are so amazing and we're going to talk about it. I'm a little over halfway done with the book, so we're going to do this episode and then we will have another episode later this month. This book has been so motivating, encouraging, and a little challenging for me. And I'll explain why a little bit into this episode. So September, September, I have two guests scheduled and I will be following up this episode with one focusing again, as I just shared on the second half of Think Like a Warrior, the five inner beliefs that make you unstoppable. This month on my weight loss journey, I am committing myself to myself for myself. (laughs) I'm committing to move faster on my weight loss journey. And while in most cases, I think that it's not a recipe for success to center weight loss around the scale. And I still think centering it around the scale is not what I want long term. However, I have some goals in which I need to be at a certain weight and the most important goals, I think. Um, and that is to be a mother. And I recently did a YouTube video. Which it will be linked on my website, wakeupbright.com. And I'm not going to go too far into it. But I do want to say that while centering weight loss around the scale is not a good idea, I will be increasing the rate at which I'm losing weight. I have to. And I will not be crash dieting or doing fad diets. But I still can't afford to go slow and steady like I've been going It's time to go faster, and so I am. And I have a lot of fear with doing that, but I have had a little talk with myself, and I've decided that I have to try and face this with confidence, confidence in the work that I've done and the habits that I've built and how I've changed my internal self-talk and my ability not to fall off and just rapidly gain weight back. And I've I've gone through some stuff. I've gone through quite a bit of stuff over the last two years and I have been consistent and I think I am past ready for challenging myself by moving faster and I probably should have already committed to doing this and instead have kind of wallowed in self-pity and have let the negativity out there influence me in ways that I never should and I denied that I was allowing that to happen for a long time and came face to face with it this past July. And I am not, I'm not, we're, we're moving forward. Like I am moving forward and I am stepping outside of my comfort zone. I have to stop holding so tightly to the good habits that I have in fear of losing the good habits because the habits don't have to go anywhere in order for me to increase my progress. Um, or increase the rate of my weight loss. Again, I recently shared a quick video on my YouTube about my motivations for going faster. And we're going to dive right into this book. The book is Think Like a Warrior, The Five Inner Beliefs That Make You 
unstoppable. This book is really awesome. And I don't know if you would enjoy reading it or not. The first time I tried to read this book, I made it through chapter three and then I was like, this book is not for me. I thought it was gonna be some like powerful, I really needed to hear that and it wasn't. It was about a fictional football coach. And I'm like, I really like football, but I don't care anything about reading about a fictional football coach. And so I stopped reading. And if I would have just kept reading just a little bit longer, I would have, I would have realized that this book is full of so much good. And I'm kind of glad that in the past I didn't because when I picked it up off the shelf to read in August, I needed it. I needed the things that are covered in this book. And I'm going to resist the urge to summarize the whole book and go into all of the details. There are a lot of good details and I'm going to leave so much out. But I'm going to mention a little bit from the introduction. In the introduction, the author shares whether you are happy and successful or frustrated and miserable as a result of your mindset and your mindset is determined by your inner beliefs beliefs that you freely choose and i needed to read that when i picked this book up i needed that and that encouraged me to go through the first three chapters again <laughs> which i still was like I don't know why, like this is like a self-help type book. It's supposed to give me the five beliefs that make me unstoppable. Like why is it talking about a football coach? A fake foot, like a, a fictional football coach at that. And if I would have just held out a little longer again, and this time I did, it actually covers the story of five amazing coaches. And each of these coaches give a belief to the fictional coach, Coach McNeely. Chris McNeely. And so Chris McNeely is who the author created and he created a sports coach and wanted to do sports in the story because he says in sports, a successful person's thoughts and actions can be directly evaluated, tested, and confirmed based on their results and results can't be denied. The scoreboard never lies, he says. We all go through obstacles on the way to achieving our dreams. And he offers that the five inner beliefs in this book have the ability to empower us to take control of our lives and overcome obstacles that stand in our way. The thing that stands in the way of us overcoming the obstacle most often is our own perception and our own mindset. And I felt like that was really powerful and I needed to read it at that time. And so I continued forward. As you may know, July was really rough for me. I got back from got back from Utah and I had to face some things that had happened earlier in the summer and I was facing my infertility issues, my trying to conceive, I don't know which way to even say it, and it was rough. It felt rough and I was feeling bitter and angry. And I didn't realize until this moment how much of the negativity until I just felt so protective over myself. I just did not want to do anything. And so I decided to take a reset in August. And that's where this book kind of come into play. In August, I read several good books. I did so many good things for my mental health. And I just took a step back. And that felt amazing. And then as September approached, I realized I don't have time. I just wanted to stay in my reset mode and I don't have time for that. And so hopefully, and what I believe is that by taking that reset, taking that time to kind of get myself squared away, I am going to be able to go forward stronger. And that might not be what everybody needs. It's okay if it's not what you need what I needed and that's what I did and I'm excited to go forward I am anxious it's rough to come to September and think of where I was at last September and think of the time that I didn't make the most of 
and I can't get that back. So I have to go forward stronger and better. And I love in this book that I'm reading the way these types of things are addressed. So we're going to start with Chris McNeely. He became head coach for an NFL team. And then as the youngest NFL coach, quickly got himself fired. He was having to declare bankruptcy. And we meet him as he's sharing that with his wife. Like he's really giving his players, his teammate, coaching staff, whatever, a hard time. And he is, after he just really ripped everyone a new one, he's kind of in his office or in the locker room, something like that, feeling sorry for himself. And he hears some like thudding, goes to check it out. Thud is the sound of a basketball coach. And he comes face to face with John Wooden, who is a very famous basketball coach, legendary, that Chris recognizes. Coach Wooden shares... People often ask me, how did you win all those national titles? What made the difference? It's an important question after all. I didn't run an intricate strategy and no one would say I was a brilliant play caller. I stressed conditioning, fundamentals, and teamwork, but lots of other coaches stressed those same things. And it wasn't talent. We had plenty of talented players, but we faced many teams more talented than us. And Chris asked, if it wasn't your strategy or talent, what was it? And... Coach Wooden goes on to say, I believe that the difference was I didn't talk about winning and losing. I didn't talk about beating opponents. I kept our focus only on what we could control, our effort and our attitude. He goes on to explain that he got the philosophy from his dad. And I I really do encourage you to get this book. If if anything I'm saying, you're like, oh, that, that sounds like a good story or that sounds interesting. Just get the, get the book because it's, it's pretty good. Coach Wooden says, by focusing on only things that you can control, it forces you to think, live, and act in the present moment. That is so important. People waste too much time and energy thinking about past mistakes or worrying about the future, but there's nothing we can do about the past and the future is determined by what we choose to focus our thoughts and actions on right now. You have to focus on the present. That is where your life is saved. That is where your life is lived. I feel like a lot of 2021 and all of 2022 for me has been focused on things outside of my control, on fears of what won't be in the future, and just not the right things. I have not been focusing on the right things, so I needed I needed these words. Wooden's words hit me square. Chris says, I had been wasting so much time and mental energy stressing myself out about replaying past mistakes or worrying about what might happen in the coming weeks and months. Focusing only on the present not only means you have to stop worrying about the future, but it also means you can't live in the future, Wooden said. You must be fully committed to the task at hand. I understand that the moment you took this job at Wisconsin State, you already had your eye out for an opportunity down the road, something you think could be bigger and better. How can you give your best here if you've already got one foot out of the door? And then Wooden goes on to explain that his players understood the power of focusing on what they could control right at this very moment. They learned to love the process of giving their best. Was the process we focused on, not the results. Why? Because we have total control over the process. The results, on the other hand, aren't always in our control. Sounds a lot like Nick Saban's philosophy, Chris said. I just had to add that last part in there because roll tide. I love Nick Saban. I love the idea of focusing on the process. And yet, I have found myself so far outside of focusing on the process and I have become so focused on what I'm not, what I can't, what other people are going to say, how whatever it is I'm doing is going to be twisted and used to hurt me or my reputation. And that is not the place to live. That fear-based, all of those things outside of my control, it's not the place to live. And it's definitely not the place to exist that's going to help me be successful in any of my goals. Wooden said, they learn to love the process of practicing hard. They learn to love the process of getting better day by day. They learn to love the process of putting the team's interest above their own. They learn to love the process of competing with themselves instead of comparing themselves to others. And I love, I just love all of the things that 
that he's saying. And some of them I'm like, I can, I do this. I try to do this. And most of them I'm like, I fall so short. I fall so short. He says, when you make a commitment to only focusing on the things you have total control on, the effort you give, the attitude you carry, and the process of improving yourself in the present moment, when you focus only on those things and let the results take care of themselves, it's been my experience that results beyond your wildest dreams tend to follow. And for me, I definitely feel my effort has been affected by the things that I am focusing on, which are outside of my control. My ability to live in the, the present moment has been affected because I have been so fearful, all things in the future and regrets of the past, but mostly fear of what may or may not come. And that is not, that is not the place to be. And I loved reading this because I needed to hear it. I needed to be reminded and I needed to be reminded in the way that this author wrote this book. And I really wouldn't have thought that a sports center book would be in this way, a fictional book <laughs> would be the way. I love that he goes on to say, I can't argue with that, Chris speaking. You won 10 national titles in 12 seasons. I think you've proven your philosophy works and wooden rebuttals, sort of. I would still believe 100% in my philosophy if we had never won a single championship. It works and it works in every area of your life. Remember when people get so engrossed in the things they have no control over, it negatively affects the things that they do have control over. Stop making this mistake in your life and teach your players to avoid this tendency as well. No more obsessing about wins and losses. No more talking about what critics and the media are saying. Focus everything you've got on what you can control, your effort and your attitude in the present moment. And, and that was definitely like a sock in my gut. I keep talking about being hit, but that's kind of how I felt about when reading this. Like it all just, I needed it. And both July and in August, as I tried to work through still stumbling and I'm still stumbling now, I'm not trying to say that I'm like come through it on the other side, all bright and shiny. Like I um, I'm still going through still going through my stuff and trying to adjust my focus onto things I can control and things I can control right now today. Um, but I love that when he says, when people get so engrossed in the things they have no control over, it, it negatively affects the things they do have control over. Stop making this mistake. I needed to hear that and to read that. And it's just powerful when we focus on things we don't have control over it will negatively affect the things we do have control over and I am so guilty of that and yeah so going on Wooden says success is not something others can give you true success can only be attained by knowing you did your very best to become the best you're capable of becoming this is how I define success I don't care what the scoreboard says what your record ends up being at the end of the season or what your job title is. If you give your best, you will be a success. And so after these meetings with these ghost coaches, he makes up a rule. And this first rule was, I focus only on the things I have total control over, my effort and my attitude. By focusing only on what I can control, my effort and my attitude in the present moment, I will have the peace of mind that comes from knowing the results will take care of themselves. I will not lose myself in the past or worry about the future. I will focus on the present. If I truly give my maximum effort to be the best I can today, I will be successful. Nothing can take that from me. Nothing can take that from me. For a long time on my weight loss journey, and when I say my weight loss journey, I mean, I decided to stop trying to shortcut the process, trying to do a diet, trying to severely over restrict calories and starve myself into a new person. 
and putting life off and doing all of the things inevitably ended up in me regaining all the weight I lost plus some. So we're coming to July, 2020. When I started this journey, I gave more than a hundred percent. And I feel like as soon as I started stumbling over criticisms and things that I couldn't control and I let those things in, it just got worse for me. And after we moved, I had paused my weight loss journey and I was good with that. Like I needed to pause. And by pausing my weight loss journey, I just mean I didn't expect to have a loss. I weighed every week and I didn't expect to have a loss. I didn't want to gain weight. Every time I had moved prior in my life, I always gained quite a bit of weight. I did not want to gain any weight. And I so I took a pause, a breath, and I continued forward. And that was very good for me until I started to get some wind in my cells and then I just, when I found out I was still so far away from even figuring out why we're not conceiving, I crumbled and then started to let fear control me in so many different ways. All of the things that I focused on probably from that point forward mostly existed outside of things that I can control. I stopped focusing on the things that I need to do in order to be successful and started focusing on how can I combat all of these things that might happen makes me sad to think about. And I'm not saying I was 100% wrong. I just wasn't giving 100%, which is wrong. And allowing myself to be distracted in those ways, I didn't even see it. I really didn't see it until July. I was still making slow and steady progress. I was still improving my relationship with myself. There are so many things that I'm so proud of, but I am also disappointed in my focus on things outside of my control and the power that I freely gave it over me. And I realize when I share things like what I'm talking about right now, for some of you, you may be able to relate to it on some degree. And then other people, it's like, well, you're saying like both, like you're saying both. And and yes, both. Like I am proud of things that I have done and I am displeased with things that I have done. I have overcame lots of things and I have been overcome by lots of things. Like it's both. And Choosing to f- focus on what I can control today is something that I did not and have not consistently been doing since we've lived in North Carolina. And it is past time for me to take control of that ship, and I am. And that feels really good. Reading these things that I've read in this book felt really good, and it felt like getting some wind back in my cells. In scripture study, I've been reading so many things that have helped put wind back in my cells. And it's it's felt so good. And we're going to go ahead and go on to the next. So Coach McNeely goes on to put this, put this advice that he got from Wooden to use and he does he does a good job at at trying and then it's like he gets sideswiped by failure essentially and he has a bad moment and then he meets another coach our McNeely had a rough night made some bad choices was super angry wanted to go drink away his sorrows and so he goes into this jazz club on the street and he meets Buck O'Neill. Um, so far, I think Buck O'Neill is my favorite, my favorite story. And I'm gonna resist the urge to go all into his story, both in the book and then just looking him up online. So I wanted to see if these coaches and things were real. And 
His story is just amazing. And Buck was a first baseman and manager for the Kansas City Monarchs. Buck became the first African-American coach in Major League Baseball. His story is pretty fascinating. I took some time to read about all of the coaches when I figured out they were real people. And I recommend the book. I also recommend if you have some spare time looking up the coaches that are real. So our McNeely is is not. So Buck strikes up a conversation. Buck then told me about his amazing journey through life. He told me how he worked his way onto the Kansas City Monarchs team. He shared stories about Satchel Paige. He told me about future Hall of Famers like Josh Gibson. Dozens of names of black players who never got the opportunities or attention that they deserved. Like how the Monarchs teams were treated like celebrities in downtown Kansas City, but then how they couldn't use the restrooms or get food at road stops all across America. And Buck shares his story. McNeely response to learning about all of these challenges and horrific things and also the amazing things that that Buck and his teammates experienced says, makes you wonder what if baseball hadn't been segregated? What if all those guys would have gotten a shot at the majors? How much more money you guys would have made? How much easier life would have been? Yeah, Buck said, but we were playing baseball. And that's my point. Despite all those disadvantages, all those things we could have complained about and gotten bitter about, we were living our dreams. My question for you is this, are you doing what you want to be doing with your life? Are you doing what you love? I thought about that for a moment and he waited. I do love the game of football, at least I think I do, or I did. These last couple of years have worn me down. I've been questioning if it's still the right career for me. Why is that, Buck asked. Is there something you'd rather be doing? I wanted to be head football coach for as long as I can remember, Buck. I don't know what happened. Wondering if I have what it takes to make it in this business, the losing, the critics, my own self-doubt, it's all taken the joy out of the game for me. No, 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 Buck said. You've got it all wrong. You can't blame anything outside of you for taking away your joy. This book is really awesome because it's constantly calling me out. It is constantly calling attention to my deficiencies. But goes on to say, I told you about all the unfair things I went through. I didn't let those things rob me of my joy and my love of the game. If my grandfather could stay optimistic after everything he went through, what excuse do any of us have? No, man, you gotta stop letting stuff out there take the joy out of your life. Passion and optimism, these are the things you have to give yourself. No one can give them to you. Which McNeely responds that a lot of bad stuff has been going on kind of as an excuse and that he can't ignore them. And Buck goes on to say there's a big difference in ignoring those things and dwelling on them. Sure, negative stuff is out there, always will be. You gotta zap those negative thoughts and focus on the positive. You gotta keep your focus on the love of the game and the good things in your life. You've gotta take the time to be thankful for all the wonderful things you have going for you. Finding out what you love to do is first step. After that, you have to remind yourself every day why you love it. The world can strip away your passion. The world isn't easy and fair. You know this, but you have so much to be thankful for. Coach goes on to list all the things that he has to be thankful for. And as I was reading that and thinking of the things that I have to be thankful for, it's so easy in our darker moments to not consider our blessings, the things that we could be grateful for. And choosing to focus and live a life with the perception of gratitude is not being toxically positive. However, acting like we don't have control, acting like we don't have the responsibility to maintain our joy, I think is toxic. And it takes work and figuring out what to do and how to do it. It isn't easy. And I, um, I like the way this book confronts things that I'm struggling with. And I like that I have this book at this time. I know I've said that several times, but it's it's just so beneficial for me. Coach McNeely goes on to agree with Buck. Like I have all these things to be thankful for. And Buck responds, damn right you do. You can't let negative outside forces take away the passion and joy from inside you. That's what makes a man bitter. You focus so much on all the negatives that you forget to focus on all the positives you have going for you. And I don't know why it's easy to do that. I know I'm not alone. I think 
it's a big part of the human experience for us to so easily focus on the negative and overlook the positive. And I, um, I want to take just a second to say that if you're listening to this, I'm sure that you in some way encourage me on my weight loss journey and you encourage me to share for whatever reason that you do. And I am grateful for you. And I am sorry that I have let negativity both from within me and externally have so much power over me. I am grateful for you. And I am grateful. I am grateful to be able to share my story in a way that encourages so many people to also share theirs and that we get to have the conversations that we do and encourage each other in the way that we do. I think it's incredibly powerful and I am definitely ashamed that I so easily allow myself to become hardened towards sharing. And that's one of the things that challenged me in July, really all of 2022 for sure. It has been hard, maybe even since last September, it has been hard for me to share. And I am so grateful for those of you who continue to encourage me and continue to uplift me and help me move forward. I think that's a large part of, of me being able to continue forward, being able to share and also feeling a responsibility to share, talking through things, even if a lot of times it's streams of thought, which really have no business ever leaving the confines of my mind. But I feel like sharing those things helps. I think when I hear things like that from other people, I'm like, oh, so it's normal. Not feeling alone is powerful. And that's probably a better way to put it. Not that it's normal, but that we're not alone. Like we all go through this human experience, which is hard. It's easy to focus on the negative. It's hard to focus on the positive. It's easy to give up and to not allow ourselves to feel joy and to make up reasons or excuses as to why we don't or we're not worthy and we are worthy and we can do the work. You are worth doing the work to figure out what you need in order to be happy, in order to go forward. We all are, and we're worth doing the work. I'm worth doing the work to overcome my shortcomings and do and be better. I love that Buck goes on to say, if you love what you do, you'll find a way to turn every obstacle into an opportunity. And I think that works with my weight loss it works with my desire to be a, a mother and it works with so many things in my case that I need to find a way to turn every obstacle in an opportunity to get me closer to where I want to be. And I need to focus on that I do love what I'm doing. I do love sharing my story if no one watched, if no one ever watched my YouTube channel, I would have continued to make videos. I love documenting my story, both for personal reasons, for me, for my husband, for my family. I also love the idea of helping someone like me find their own way. Before I started sharing my story, I didn't see anyone share the process. It was typically people sharing the after while no one else's journey should look like mine, I think it's good to see other people go through it. It helps us feel not alone when there's other people going through it. And we're each unique. We all need different things. So no two journeys are going to be exactly the same. No two lives are going to be exactly the same. And documenting my story allows me to see that progress. I have irrefutable evidence that I am capable of things I thought were impossible for myself. I have evidence that small changes 
over time compound, that being kind to myself is powerful and helps me push forward. I know I'm capable of pushing past my comfort zone. I'm capable of focusing only on my effort and my attitude and letting go of things that I can't control. I'm capable of letting go of complacency and fear and attacking each day with joy. And I'm capable of pushing harder. And that is what I'm striving to do. Pushing harder. And for me right now, that means being more aggressive about the number on the scale. I definitely don't recommend that be the focus for most. And it's definitely not the focus of me forever. But until I reach that that weight that I need to in order to get the care that I need, I am focusing on that. And I want to encourage you to do the work to figure out what it is that you want, what it is that you need, and push forward. You can do things that you think are impossible. You can do hard things. And if you enjoyed the excerpts from this book, Think Like a Warrior, The Five Inner Beliefs That Make You Unstoppable by Darren Donnelly. It is a really good book. Like I said, if you're not into sports, it might be a little not, it did not pull me in at first, but then it got me and it got me good. And I will have another podcast episode going over more of these later this month. Next week, I have a very special guest. Sarah recently had weight loss surgery and she'd already lost quite a bit of weight before. She's a phenomenal person and maybe some of you have seen her if you're if you're here from my youtube channel in the chats speaking of youtube if you've never seen my channel and you'd like to it's youtube.com backslash april lauren and i recently created a channel membership option for a book club so it's just one option for the book club we will vote on a book every month and then have a private chat either via live or what I would prefer zoom but we will be voting on that as a group I look forward to talking to you next time remember you are worth doing the work you are worth living each day a little healthier a little brighter and I am sending you all the love and encouragement that I can have a wonderful week